Hi, everybody. I'm Ian Gracie, Dean of Admission at Groton School. Thank you very much for joining our webinar tonight, The Groton Difference, What Makes Groton Groton? We've got an all-star cast here, and um, we've had superstars uh, in the past uh, on panels. This is a great one, I think. And our objective tonight is to give you a sense of the essence of life at Groton School. Um, this is important to understand. You're gonna learn a lot about Groton by attending information sessions and webinars like this. In this era of the pandemic, it, it is, uh, it, it may appear to be difficult to communicate who we are as a community uh, in that we can't, you know, you can't come on campus to have a, a tour with a tour guide at this point. But you're going to hear and see many different people uh, from our Groton community through our webinars, our Zoom meetings, and our information sessions. This is a good night. Uh, we have some terrific people. I encourage you to place questions in the chat, and uh, they will be screened by our Director of Inclusion Outreach, Carolyn Chica. Hi, Chica. And uh, let, let's uh, let's hear from these folks um, and who they are. Uh, Elizabeth, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so hi, my name is Elizabeth. I'm from Concord, Massachusetts, and my graduation year is 2023. So I'm currently a fifth former or junior. Great. My name is Logan Taylor. I'm from Hanover, New Hampshire, and I'll be graduating this year um, and or next year in 2022. And I'm currently a senior or sixth former. Um, my name is Derek, and I am from Hong Kong. I graduated last year, or no, this year, 2021. I entered uh, Groton in third form. Hi, everyone. I'm Will. Um, I'm from Marion, Massachusetts, and I'm a junior or a fifth former. Uh, and I also entered Groton as a fifth, uh, third former. Hi, everyone. My name is Montana. I entered Groton as a third former. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I graduated in 2019, so I'm currently a junior in college. Ms. Chica? Hi, everyone. My name is Carolyn Chica. I'm originally from Queens, New York, and this is my fifth year on The Circle. And let me turn things over to our, our leader, our headmaster, Mr. Temba Makubela. Hello, folks. Um, as you've heard, my name is Temba Makubela. I'm entering my ninth year as a Groton headmaster. I would not be myself if I did not acknowledge the fact that having this all-star lineup here, I'm biased. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gracie. I, when I found out who was coming, I said, my goodness, seriously, five out of the six have been inside my classroom. So, um, and it's, it is such a privilege um, to have that. And because of that, I just have to explain that the primacy of the academic program at Groton is real. Excellence is real. Excellence is celebrated. And the pillars of scholarship um, are, are actually evident on the screen with some of the, you know, uh, the students and alum you see here, alums you see here. And we want these pillars of scholarship and service to actually be um, for everybody. So we're trying to find a way to make inclusion and belonging a staple of excellence at Groton School. Um, and you couldn't find a better place to come to be with members of a family, all of whom, from myself all the way, are rooting for you to succeed. And I'm sure as you will hear from some of the panelists, um, we, we really pride ourselves in what the founder built the school on, family. Just now, uh, Mrs. Makovela had uh, adv 10 advisees who ate some of the food that was sent to me by a former student who just wanted to say thank you, but there was so much of it that we shared the food with everybody. So that is the kind of family we are. And of course, service. Um, 
when you're trying to serve, to do service, you have to be rooted in scholarship. So I just wanted to say off the bat that we don't run away from who we are as a school that prides itself in scholarship, service, spirituality, and globalism. Because as you will see on the screen, there are four continents. Um, is it four or five? Probably four continents represented. And there are not many of us here. So I just want to let you know that this is a place of belonging. This is a place of inclusion. And all of these are tied together by the fact that we pride ourselves in scholarship. So I will let the others um, explain themselves. But if I said anything else other than that, I would hear it in class tomorrow because um, students actually make sure that I don't, I, I'm honest. And they are very, very clear about the fact that you like teaching. You like teaching us hard things, but you do so in a family atmosphere. I think Elizabeth and others will actually say that. So welcome, thank you for giving us a look and I'll turn things over to Mr. Gracie. Thank you, Mr. Makabella. Um, one of the themes that we have adopted at Groton, uh, the mottos um, that we have relates to dynamic equilibrium. Those of you who have received our view book see that it is entitled dynamic equilibrium. We think this is an appropriate uh, title for a view book and an important idea here at Groton because we are a school run by a chemistry teacher. And I'd like to turn to uh, one of his students, Logan Taylor to, Logan, could you please tell us about dynamic equilibrium in, in chemistry and how it relates to life at Groton? Of course. So dynamic equilibrium is a process in which products and reactants are continually forming at the same rate, which results in a state of stability. Uh, I think that this applies to Groton and that there's a lot going on. Campus is full of kids doing lots of different things. But there's also a balance that keeps everyone steady while also giving us access to the best of both worlds. That's great, Logan. Um, now, five, five of you, I believe, or, or is it four or five of you have actually taken or organic chemistry or are taking organic chemistry. So I, I'd like to ask, uh, is there anything else that we can add to Logan's definition? Uh, one thing I might add to the definition is that uh, when uh, reactants turn into products throughout the course of a reaction and then the equilibrium is established bringing products back to the reactants, uh, or reactants back to pro products back to reactants, sorry. Um, I'm getting confused, but <laughs> that's similar to the way in which uh, a lot of Groton students uh, sort of grow up through the forms and uh, are mature a lot and are, learn a lot from their older peers. Um, but in the end, everyone will end up a prefect in sixth form uh, or, or most people will end up prefecting dorms. Uh, there will be uh, leadership positions all around the school in which older students having sort of gone through the Groton reaction um, will be able to pass on what they've learned and th how they've experienced Groton in a way that will help younger students do the same. That's terrific. Yeah, I just wanna stress for everyone the importance of the dynamism of this process, of the give and take uh, between products and reactants. Um, there, we're always moving and we're moving between opposite uh, activities in many, in many ways. And so what I'd like to do is present a series of, of the, the sort of uh, different uh, differences in our lives and how we go back and forth uh, in that, uh, like a chemical reaction. So let's begin with this topic, um, the individual and the community. Um, you as a Groton student have individual goals and you also have goals for the community. And I'd like to know, uh, uh, if you uh, could, any of you begin by just explaining how the two are related and how they go back and forth in your daily life. Who wants to take that on? 
I mean, I think there's really a lot of both, like all the time. And I do feel like at Groton, it is very individualized in terms of like your relationships with teachers, I think, especially. And like, I was thinking about last year, my English teacher said like, you know, even though I won't have you as a teacher next year, like come to my classroom just to talk about books or whatever. And I just feel like I've really like connected with my teachers a lot and on a very individual level. But then at the same time, there's also the sense of the community and the class as a whole and like how the classes each bond a lot. And, you know, sometimes like group chats from classes will still be active in the future and just like we still miss that group. So there's really a lot of like there's both individual and the community like at the same time and that there's sort of a push and pull, but it's also just that they can kind of coexist all the time, I think. Yeah, I can also add on to that um, as now no longer part of the physical Groton community. Um, and so awesome that these events can now be virtual so I can participate as well. Um, but after you graduate Groton, you're clearly going into the world more so as an, individu as an individual than you ever have before. Um, and I think in hindsight, looking at what Groton gave me is such a, a foundation um, of family that I always feel I can go back to, whether that is in the physical sense or in the virtual sense. I still call teachers. I text teachers all the time. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was at Groton actually to say hi to the Machavellas um, and some former teachers. And so understanding that that academic base, that personal base, um, whatever that relationship may be, whether it was a coach or a teacher um, or an advisor will always exist even after you leave campus, allows you to move forward as an individual and grow as an individual who has a support network that goes beyond like whatever space you're in. Um, and so I entered college and I knew nobody, but I understood that I had such a backing on the other side of the country um, and that if I ever needed anything, um, I had a lot of people I could rely on and who only wanted me to succeed. And so having an understanding that as you move forward in the world is such a beautiful thing because a lot of um, students, especially as they transition from high school to college, don't have that backing um, and understanding. Yeah, adding on to what Montana said, um, I also feel like Brian has a very strong like support community. Um, even at, like college is super big and like there's a lot of people and you don't get that same sense of community you have a Groton and like even here at like college I'm still asking like teachers from Groton for help in like different subjects and stuff so like you know it's it's always nice keeping in touch with uh, Groton people so who could talk about the the nuts and bolts about how we build a sense of community in the pandemic one of the things that people are, are missing most of all I think is the sense of a, a strong community we have one how does it work? What are some of the components of that? I can also speak to this a bit and then I'll give it to Will since he's, once he's, since he's in campus right now. But I think it's something that I realized um, is that everything that Groton does to, to educate a child, whatever that means these days is so deliberate. Um, it's an active process. So even community or whether it's inclusion or whether it's building good judgment, all of these things are active processes. Um, and so at Groton, when you come in as a new third form or a new fourth form or whatever you end up being, there's so much structure in place to help you integrate into community, whether that is um, coming at coming to your dorm at the end of the night at 10 p.m. and like having a check-in where it's like a mandatory session to share about your day and where the only purpose is to say like, how are you? Um, and that you're all doing the same thing at the same time. You're all in study hall together. You're all doing sports together. You're all in classes at the same time. The fact that we have sacred spaces for certain groups of people, whether that is a form, whether that is an affinity group, um, where we have um, Saturday school, which emphasizes the fact that we want people to stay on the weekends and we want people to engage in the community, whether that's clubs or sports teams um, or exploring the town, stuff like that, where you realize that community doesn't need to be something that is like, oh, I will make friends. Groton really emphasizes like you're going to make friends and here's like 10 different ways on how you can find them um, in a way that is so beautifully constructed um, that you actually don't realize you're in it until you're out of it. And you're like, oh, like, 
wow, the fact that I was um, encouraged to play a sport all, all three terms was to A, meet people who were outside of my form, B, to meet people who are inside of my form. Like I, my best friend from Groton is because I was essentially mandated to play JV basketball. And like, I'm so grateful that I met her or else we would never would have been friends. So stuff like that, you realize like in the moment, it's like, okay, another thing to do, but then you don't have this um, pe these period of times where you're like, oh, what am I supposed to be doing? Or, or who am I supposed to be talking to? Or who can I talk to? Um, because all those structures are already in place for you. Great. Will, can you add to this? I totally agree with all of that. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was going to, the two main uh, elements of the, like a rotten day, um, to be very specific, that I think really um, help with the sense of community are chapel and check in. Um, as Montana mentioned, check in is sort of a time where everyone in your dorm can get together and sort of when everyone's at the end of a busy day is still doing homework, trying to get all their assignments done. It's very nice to have everyone take a break um, and sort of see each other, talk to each other, um, and just sort of make sure that everyone, you know, has is like how they're doing. Um, everyone, everyone gets to sort of talk to each other and it, it ensures that no one really sort of uh, is allowed to stray from the group a lot. And everyone sort of at, at the end of the day is coming back um, together. But the nice thing is at the beginning of the, of the day, we have chapel as well. So that sort of at the start of, and end of your day, you're coming together with a large group. Um, chapel, of course, being an even larger group because the whole school is there. Um, but it's very nice to have those two periods to not only be with a lot of other people, but also just sort of be forced to take a break from sort of having a racing mind, thinking about all your assignments or your sports or what you're going to do next and just sort of take a breather in the middle of the day and just be allowed to sort of sit and think for a bit and catch up with friends and just sort of let your mind relax a little bit. Yeah, we have check-in uh, every night um, at the end of the school day. Chapel is four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Derek, could you give the audience just a, a little bit more detail about what, what chapel is about? Well, chapel is really about understanding like the stories of other people in your class. Usually like a lot of students, especially seniors, like to speak about like, you know, their life, a funny story or, you know, something educational. And through that, you really got to connect with like students and each like every chap talk is an opportunity to express yourself to the whole school, for, uh, increasing that connection between you and everyone else. And also like, usually I think, I'm not quite sure about now, but um, like we like went, like we go like singing after like a chapel talk. And like, I think singing is like really fun because like you gotta like, it's just really joyful. And um, it's really, it just like, once again, allows you to connect with everyone else. And so I think chapel is really about that community and also don't forget that postludes like sometimes i remember montana she was a wonderful cellist back in the day and she was like gloria and cho they used to do these like wonderful performances and uh it always like like made me enjoy um the overall chapel experience so it's a great Can I just add that today you know the postlude all of us listen to the pathetic by beethoven played by a third former and if you, if you know that piece, there are moments where it's, you, know, you have to be quiet, you know, where the, the pianist has to be quiet and there was total silence. And one person through his brilliant play brought all of us together. It was a very spiritual moment. So we have those moments, right, Mr. Crazy? It's, it's wonderful to have uh, these events um, uh, to start your day as well as pointing to. Um, we hear chapel talks from our six formers or teachers or guests, and they, they, the experience of listening to them can vary. You can have very poignant talks. There can be downright belly laugh, funny talks. Um, there can be uh, areas where uh, um, a speaker is exploring all sorts of different areas, but it's your chance to make a statement to a community. And uh, it, it really is a great way to warm up your day. And um, as we've heard, this is a really wonderful opportunity to hear or perform music at Groton School. It's nice to make sure that that's part of our lives. Uh,
practically practically a, a daily basis. Okay, let's move over to. to um, uh, let me just point out that uh, answering some questions that come through in the chat, but we will answer questions towards the end of this program. We'll probably run for about forty five minutes um, before we uh, start answering questions directly as a whole group. Um, Let's turn to another set of opposites, tradition and innovation. Can you, can anyone speak about traditions in Groton and how we also have made innovations? We had to make a lot of innovations uh, when we had COVID-19, COVID come upon us. Um, but we're, we are an innovative school as well. Can anyone speak to that, please? Um, I can speak to, oh, sorry, you go ahead, Logan. Okay, thank you, Derek. Um, so Groton School has a lot of very old, very deep rooted traditions, but it also is very adaptable. So um, right when I came, there was a big push from um, student groups to incorporate um, green energy into um, Groton's energy usage. And so they um, worked with the trustees to install solar panels. Um, so Groton um, uses, I think, completely green energy now, which is truly amazing. Um, and they also, the solar panels power batteries that were actually invented by a Groton alum, um, Nobel Peace Prize winner too, which is, I find is also truly interesting. But in addition to that, we have deeper traditions like chapel, um, check-in. We can't do them right now, but we normally have a handshake line after check-in in which all the kids in the dorm will shake hands with the prefects, which is a nice way to wrap up the day um, and head to bed. We'll take um, credit for the Nobel Prize, but not the Nobel Peace Prize, right? <laughs> my bad, my bad, sorry, I'm a little confused. Derek, Derek, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, so I know like Groton has a lot of traditions, but over time it's evolved to be more inclusive of, of different people regardless of gender race ethnicity and so I remember like back in like back before my form like we had a very active form engaging in inclusion so during prize day traditionally what they do in the past is that they line up boy girl to like the line to like to receive your um, diplomas but this year you know our form like wanted to be more inclusive of non-binary students so what they did was that they did it in alphabetical order so that everyone, like regardless of like gender, like orientation, would all feel like included in the community. So that's something I'm really proud of, of my form and of the school. What other traditions um, do you, uh, what, what do you miss Montana? Are there any traditions that uh, were fun for you that you kind of wish you saw at your university? <laughs> Um, I miss check-in so much. Um, I I was a Groton dorm fiend, dorm fiend. I think it's like one of the best parts of Groton and such an integral part of like boarding school in general is the fact that at the end of the day, you're going back home, quote unquote home with all of your classmates and your friends. And you really get to live with someone for all 24 hours of the day, which just is an incredible experience at such an impressionable age. I, I love to answer to in the chat about this as well. Um, like I'm, my friends from all over the world and I've had friends from all over the world um, since I was 13 years old, which is something that majority of people don't experience. Um, and it just changes like how you see the world. It introduces you to perspectives that you, that you don't consider when you're living with your localized community. Um, and so coming back at the end of the day, um, when your homework is done, or maybe it's not done, a lot of times it's not done, um, and having like a time to share food and talk um, amongst yourselves, especially with the teacher. Um, sometimes there's a theme. My dorm got really into like game nights or like talking about certain things. So I just loved coming back. Um, you definitely don't have that same centralized community. Um, at college and and I mean it's very different. I, I ended up joining like organizations to recreate that because I missed it so much, especially in all female environment. Um, and so I think one of the most like the greatest things about Groton and boarding school is the fact that you're surrounded by your classmates and you're learning from them 24 um, seven. And when you're 14 through 18, that's something that you can't replicate um, at a day school. So or I guess at a, at a non-boarding school. Um, so definitely miss that. 
some other small things. I definitely miss like the dining hall at Groton. So good. And having bread, every freshly made bread, every lunch in the winter, stuff like that, where people at college are like, what do you mean you had bread every day? I'm like, I expect bread. Um, so stuff like that, <laughs> where you realize how, how awesome the place Groton is. Um, but yeah, definitely dorms are at the top of the experience. I just want to briefly add on to how amazing dorm life is. So I'm currently a prefect in a third form dorm. And I can honestly say after a little over two weeks, I genuinely love all of my third formers. It's so much fun. Like after, after check-in, they can come to us for advice. We talk to them about how their day's been. Um, we have inside jokes, just a lot of little things that truly feel like, like it's a family. Great. Morning. Could you tell people uh, about the prefect system at, at Groton? Mm -hmm. So when you reach sixth form, um, all the sixth formers are prefects in a dorm. So it could be an upper school with the fourth and fifth formers, or it could be in lower school with the third formers or second formers. And so basically as a prefect, um, your job is just to look over um, the people in your dorm, making sure that they're doing well with their schoolwork, getting to their classes on time, as well as being a resource for help with work, advice, anything like that. Yeah, I, I like my high school very much, but there was no way that seniors would serve the uh, ninth graders the way you see that at Groton. It's really an amazing cycle of student life, isn't it? It is. Yeah, great. All right, let's turn to another, um, another difference. How about um, Groton as a country school and also embracing the wider world? How do we do that at Groton? We're a school of 380 students, 40, 45 miles northwest of Boston. Uh, we're in a country town, and yet the world is a place that we reach out to and a, a, a place that we bring to us as well. Can, can you talk about the country school and the wider world? Yeah, I can uh, certainly uh, attest to that. I think like as an international student from Hong Kong, uh, Groton did a really good job of making me feel like home away from home. Um, like we had these like this organization called ICAP, which is for like international students. And I remember like the leader, uh, Miss Stanton, she used to like bring a lot of like foods like sushi, like, you know, like um, Madeleines, like all these like snacks from different like places of the world. And like, just made me feel like really embraced into the community and like made me feel like I'm at home in Hong Kong. So that's great. Who, who could explain what a geo is? What's a geo? I can explain that because I went on so many of them. Um, <laughs> um, GEO stands for Global Education Opportunity, I believe. Okay. Um, and it's it's an opportunity to sort of expand your horizons, whether that's studying something that you've formally studied in a classroom in the actual place or exploring a new place and something new. So I've, I've been on GEOs that have been academic. I, I took Latin all four years of, of Groton and loved it and ended up going on a Greece trip. Um, and exploring a lot of the places that we formerly talked about in the ancient Roman Empire, which was so cool to see the physical place as well. Um, and then I've also been on like music trips. I've, I've been to all over the Western world, um, and Western and Eastern world actually, now that I think about it, um, on orchestra tours, on admission trips, um, um, where we share music with the community and, and likewise um, share, um, they share something back with us. I think one of the most impactful trips of my high school career was having the opportunity to travel to a boarding school in Botswana where I shared like my love of classical music. I'm a cellist um, and they shared their love Love of traditional um, marimba music and it was such an incredible um, conflation of like community and like musical understanding and culture and you realize like the world is just such a beautiful place if only you got the time to explore it um, so I think it's really incredible that Groton both makes space um, in the school year whether that is a spring um, sorry like a spring break sort of trip or like an over the summer sort of trip um, I think they also maybe do over winter break, maybe. I think I did a winter break trip. Um, and so they make space for that throughout the school year. Um, but also it's super supported, whether that's financially, 
um, and there's lots of financial aid that can be attributed to geo trips um, and really making sure that that process is both um, inclusive and diverse and along lines of Groton's um, entire mission statement. Um, so definitely think that's one of the coolest parts that you can explore your interests both in the tiny aspect of, of Groton, Massachusetts, a gr tiny location of Groton, Massachusetts or in the great wide world as well. Thanks, Montana. Let's turn to another uh, pair of opposites. Um, many of the Groton, many Groton students have a real a special talent, but we don't want people to get too specialized and not reach out to other areas. And, and yet we still want them to develop that talent. So could you speak to specialization and the generalist? Can we, can we think about that? How can you move from working on your special skill to also being just exploring different parts of uh, different skill sets that you might have? May I just say that Logan taught me here. I thought he was an incredible uh, organic chemistry student. And he also said, I'm also a football player <laughs> and I can do both. So I guess he'll speak to that. I could not quite see the two until I, I saw him in action on the football field. So just wanted to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and also I think Grant does a great job of providing everyone with a baseline. So in third form, you're required to take a wide variety of classes just to get your feet underneath you and just experience what's out there. And for example, like, I never knew that I'd be passionate about chemistry um, until I came to Groton. I thought I was just a math person. Um, but then when I took AP chemistry, I realized that it's very interesting and, it, and it's something that I want to learn more about. And so I think that this combination of having a wide variety and giving a lot of exposure to the students, while also giving them the potential to take electives such as organic chemistry or I'm taking biochemistry um, this term, is a nice duality that I, I really love. Great. Others? Yeah, I really agree with what everything Logan was saying. I think that like the baseline of the classes that you have to take, especially I think the history classes too, like you take sacred texts in third form and then um, in either your fourth or your fifth form year, you have to take world in the West and then US history. And like coming to Groton, I really liked math and science. And I would just thought, you know, those are the things I really like. And I hadn't really had like a real history class before coming to Groton. But then when I started here, I just really like fell in love with history and I just discovered how much I loved it. And so I think it was really good to just be able to like child the different things. But then at the same time, like I have some friends who just, they're sure like they wanna be doctors, they wanna go pre-med and they have the opportunity to take AP bio and then they can take anatomy courses. And so they can really like flesh out that aspect of their learning. But at the same time, they're still taking US history and the English classes and they also have room for other electives. So you really can kind of like, you can get everything and also while still like reinforcing the things that you really like at the same time. So I think there's a really nice balance between the two. Yeah, I just wanted to add that I totally agree and with Logan and Elizabeth and Derek, I'm curious to see if you agree here, but I think like one of my strongest skills coming into college was the fact that I just had such breadth in everything that, um, in any possible subject. Like I felt comfortable writing, I felt comfortable taking math and science, and I felt comfortable taking language and a slew of other different fields. Um, I think Groton just prepares you so well to be a, to be an, a student um, and not to be like a student of a certain subject. Um, and I ended up, as sounds like a bunch of people in this panel, ended up kind of quote unquote specializing in chemistry. Um, quote, quote, or hint, hint to Mr. Machiavella and his, how, how influential he is. Um, but I also took four years of Latin and I took four years of Spanish and I did four years of cello and all of these other things where it was really not a pressured environment to do one thing. And in fact, I think it's celebrated to have breadth over depth because when you're in high school, like why specialize? There's no need. Um, and if you want to, you can, but there's given space and there's opportunity to do more than one thing. Um, and I think it's incredible how many interests people have and how that each of those can be cultivated and developed in Groton um, and then further explored once you leave. And I have people and I have friends here 
um, in college who don't have that dexterity when they're approaching classes and they end up specializing in one thing. And when I think about when I enter the world one day, like who do I want to be as a citizen of the world, I'd rather have the ability to analyze multiple perspectives and bring together multiple ideas than to be stuck into one frame of mind. That's terrific. I, I love the way that you can uh, develop an interest and really pursue it. So I'd like, um, I'd like to hear about the development of two different groups. I'd like to hear about uh, Gloman Cho, and I want to, but first I want to hear about the Ukulele Club, Elizabeth. How did that well, come to you? Yeah, there was a Ukulele Club, I think a few years ago, and we decided last year that we wanted to revive it. And uh, it was just like a really fun, nice thing to be able to just like have it be just something where people could go and just relax and have fun with it. And it was just like a very nice way. It was a very generalized thing of we're not specializing in learning ukulele and being professional ukulele players, but it's just a fun thing that in addition to classes and sports and everything else that everyone's doing, that they could just come and just do that and have fun. So is it usually Saturday afternoons? Is that when you when it was last year? I think with sports now we're gonna find a new time, but it's just a fun, yeah, fun time. Well, man, Joe. Oh, how did that come to be? Um, Glomont Cho was actually interesting. So two friends and I um, ended up forming a, a musical group um, called Glomont Cho, which is just a combination of a super innovative combination of all of our names. Um, and each of us was classically trained in each of our instruments, um, a cellist, um, another was a pianist, another was a vocalist. Um, and we sort of reached this point where we were sort of not, not disillusioned with classical music and, and still holds a special place in my heart, but just realizing that there's so many other forms of music out there. Um, and like we'd been trained in such a, uh, a strict way, I'll say. Um, and so like just messing around in a practice room one night, we started just playing around like, oh, maybe we should go into some pop music, guys. Like, what if we like put together some arrangements? I have a really, one of, one of um, the members of really talented um, arranger of music. Um, and so we ended up choosing, I think our first song was, an Adele song, I can't place it right now. Um, I'll get, I'll, I'll th I remember I'll put it in the chat. Um, but we played at an open mic at Groton, which is super fun time where everyone can get up and share anything from like a piece of poetry, um, an original piece of music, a cover of a piece of music, people would dance. Um, and so really runs the spectrum, a really supportive group of people um, as well who come and listen in super respectful time. Um, and we got up and we like did this rendition of this Adele love ballad. Um, and it was just like received so well and we felt so supported and everyone was clapping and cheering. We're like, oh my God, guys, like, wow, like that was so fun. Like we never knew we could do that. Like who knew? We just like put this together in the music room one day. Um, so then we did another one and then we did another one. It sort of spiraled. And then our junior year, we decided to do a tutorial, which is essentially when you explore an interest that's not explicitly offered by the school, but you can be sponsored by a faculty member. Um, and so we decided to make an album, which um, any tech savvy people may be able to find on Spotify. Um, but it was felt so supported by the Garten community to explore something that we didn't even know, know we were interested in became a really big part of my Groton experience, did it every single year, whether it was performing at chapel, like was previous mentioned, um, or at admission trip, admi excuse me, admissions trips or Groton functions or just at open mics like we did so casually. Um, and yeah, it was a really beautiful supportive environment that allowed us to do that and explore it as we grew up. Yeah. Mr. Grace, can I just say, these are examples of dynamic excellence. <laughs> you know, it's like excellence in all kinds of spaces, not just one, it's all about equilibrium. Anyway, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Macabella. I wanted to turn to uh, the member of the panel who uh, may not know dynamic equilibrium that much in a chemistry sense, but Derek, you basically were the lead reporter uh, on the Circle Voice, the one of the editors, is that correct? Yes, that is. Could you talk about that activity? And I mean, that's a pretty time consuming uh, activity, right? I mean, I think it's uh, it's time consuming, but it's the enjoyable type of time consuming. Um, you know, there are a lot of talented writers uh, at Groton, and like to be honest, like speaking to the earlier point on like specialization and like generalization, right? Uh, I didn't really consider myself to be a writer back in the day, um, 
But as soon as I wrote, like I attended a first club meeting for the Circle Voice, which is uh, our school newspaper, um, I instantly fell in love with it. The community was so like supportive of me. And so I just started writing and writing and writing. And, you know, so but surely I became like the uh, editor in chief of uh, the, my, the school newspaper. And I, I just love reading like all the articles, editing them because it's like lovely hearing like all the different voices and opinions people have to share. I know Elizabeth is a, is like a great writer. Uh, I'm really glad she decided to write for the Circle Voice. Um, and yeah, uh, it was really fun overall experience. And I'm, there are also many other clubs like the Circle Voice I grew in, in which like, you know, people can find their own like passions and pursue them. I think that's very true. Um, I think we've given this audience quite a sense of, of how dynamic life is at Groton. Are there downtimes where, where you can just be at peace? Uh, can you talk about that? I mean, we've, we've, it seems like you're busy all the time, but uh, how do you find peace and reflect when you're at Groton? Well, personally, I like Sunday mornings. Sunday mornings are kind of my, my time to relax, de-stress from the week, um, reorient myself, and then focus on the week ahead. Um, so on Sunday, there isn't really anything that's required except for whatever religious commitment you're doing. Um, so there's a lot of free time to, whether you want to get ahead and work or just relax a little bit. Um, so Sundays are one of my favorite, our favorite days at Groton, um, besides Saturdays, which is when we have games. So yes, I like to use Sundays as my, as my peace time. Uh, for me, it's uh, during check-in when we have these things called feeds. And uh, for those of you who don't know what feeds are, feeds are like, like cooked meals or snacks made by your dorm heads. And so I remember I had Miss Lincoln was one of my dorm heads. And after a long day, she'd like make me a nice meatball sub. And it was just like really delicious and very warming and like, I just felt so good afterwards. So that's like really my time to de-stress. Will, can you tell uh, folks about Parlor? Um, what's Parlor all about? Parlor is um, that's an occasion once a week, I think on Thursdays normally, in which one of the forms um, is invited to Mr. and Mrs. Macabella's house, uh, the headmaster's house. And there is lots of milk and cookies, which the students always love, um, and games to play. And it's basically just 80 or 90 kids all going to hang out with, you know, two teachers, which is not something you really get like at, a, at a, most schools. And I think is really cool um, because it's a time where you can hang out with your friends or you can hang out and I don't know, play ping pong against Mr. Macabella, um, which is just a really fun uh, sort of change of pace from, especially because it's, sort of uh in the middle it's a at a time in the middle of the week where a lot of the time you're working or i don't know staying late to a sports practice and you just sort of all you're thinking about is what am i going to do next and you get to just go play play games have fun relax and take your mind out does mr macabella always win at ping pong <laughs> Not always. There, there are definitely some some good players. Student. Well, I think we should open things up, uh, Carolyn. Do you think we should open things up and, and grab some questions? I know you've been answering a lot of them, but we should hear from the panel as well. While she's looking right now, I just want to remind people we have a lot of events coming up in the next few days. On Thursday, we have a, a webinar that Ms. Chika and I will run based, and it's all about navigating your way through the application process. I think that could be really helpful. And um, on Saturday from about 10.30 to two Eastern time, we will have uh, an open house and we have a lot of different activities. I'll be sending everyone an invitation to that once more uh, with a, a full description of, of the events so that you can get a sense of what we have uh, coming up. That's on Saturday. Ms. Chica. All right. Um, there are so many different questions. I've tried to answer as many as I could. Um, but one question that popped up for me is, um, 
what would be the best part about boarding at Groton? We kind of already spoke to this, but maybe we could just pop for a few answers. Best part about boarding for Derek, for Derek is the speed, is that right? <laughs> I think another super underrated part of boarding is that you have a lot of access to your teachers, which like maybe for better or for worse for them. Um, but I know that I would go over to my teacher's houses for whether that was like homework help um, or like topic help, or even just like wanting to hear their opinions about life. I think I, my history teacher and I, um, my senior year of Groton, um, US history teacher are still in contact and I'll like send them articles nowadays and say like, what do you think about this? Or like, tell me more about this background. Anything I'm missing here? And he'll send me like reading recs and podcast recommendations. Um, and it's this idea that you're forging connections beyond the classroom. And now we're just like academic equals. Like he definitely knows way more than I do, but it's super cool to have that as a resource where I feel comfortable asking his opinion. like even outside of the Groton space. I think I, I even sent him a research paper I wrote in college and was like, can you read this for me? Um, so like that support network never goes away. And that idea that you have like unlimited office hours as a high schooler, it's like kind of crazy. And one other thing uh, about the boarding experience that uh, it's really tough to put a label on one thing, but sort of the spontaneous things that happen during hours of free time. Um, especially on weekends, I think is really cool because yeah, sometimes on Sundays, I remember, uh, in uh, last year, a few of my friends would go out every Sunday for an hour from like three to four and just play football on one of the, uh, on the turf fields and just sort of take a break to relax from all their work. But other times during our freebie periods in third form, uh, one of my friends and I would, who both really had very little idea of how to play the piano, would go into the music practice rooms and just sort of try to learn some songs um, and play and sing pretty terribly, but it was just super fun. Um, or other times, I remember my friends and I would stay up till like 1 or 2 a.m. on a Saturday night in third form watching horror movies and having freestyle rapping competitions and just sort of whatever we could think of to pass the time, which is tough to get when you have to go home at the end of the day um, and be on, on your own, which is obviously the, the drawback to that is that you're not with your family all the time, but because you have the sort of second family living in a dorm, you tend to sort of have an easy time taking your mind off all of that since there's so many fun things to do. Can you boarders just um, share some thoughts about how you remain connected to your family? What, what, what do you do or what did you do? Did you communicate with your folks once a week? Did you have a ritual or anything? Yeah, I, I did my best to call my parents like every day. Uh, I know like not a lot of uh, people do that, but you know, when you're at boarding school, you should. So um, that's what I did. You've just made hundreds of parents happy, Derek. Um, could I um, move us along with some of the other questions we've got going? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Um, another question that we had was, while there are great advantages of being a smaller boarding school, what are some of the considerations? We are smaller than the peers with whom we, um, we compete with athletically. Um, that certainly makes for some challenges, but we managed to do pretty well. What other thoughts do you have about being a school of 380? Uh, I think I'd like to add on to Mr. Gracie's uh, point. Um, like I, I know this guy called Bronin Doherty, and uh, he's like a D1 lacrosse player at Notre Dame. Um, and he said, like, even though like Ron is a really small school, as a second former, he was like forced to go in the lacrosse field, like like play against like larger, much, big, much bigger people than him. So that really taught him how to like you know, improve his lost cross skills. So in a sense, like being a boarding school really helped him develop as a player. So that's why I heard it from him. Another, I'm sorry. No, go, go well. Uh, I was gonna say another aspect of the sort of small school environment is that a lot of times there's so much, there's a, a need for a lot of students to cross over and try new activities. Um, or activities that are not new, but necessarily, but uh, sort of end up meaning a lot to them, even though if they didn't necessarily plan on doing it at Groton. Like, for example, one of my friends who's an amazing singer, um, 
but didn't plan on doing choir uh, because he couldn't fit it fit in into his schedule since he also is really good at playing the cello. Um, he was sort of granted an exception uh, to not have to come to practices, but he still sings with us every Sunday because we just need sort of an extra voice um, or an extra singer every Sunday to help us uh, with our get in our chapel services or other performances. Um, it is really nice because not only is it that sort of those rules of the required classes that uh, are required sports that get everyone trying new things, but also the willingness to sort of um, just sort of be lenient and allow people to do something that benefits them, but also other people. Great. I mean, I think the other caveat to being small is that people are like everyone knows everyone um, and it can feel like a little like too small almost. Um, and what I liked about that coming in as a freshman is that a the benefit of being small is that you have a lot of visibility on each student at Groton and, and everyone knows everyone is a really cool thing to be like oh ev I could name everyone in the school by the time I was like a couple months in which is kind of an insane thing to think about um, but also the fact that you have so many structural um, support networks whether that is friends whether that's like your dorm head whether that's your prefects your teachers that all know you so personally that it doesn't feel like you're at school and it feels like you're like at your home away from home and like you're going in your dorm and you leave your dorm to go to school and then you come back home and I really use that term liberally because I, I actually mean it um, and you only get that when you're at a school that has that much visibility on each individual student um, if I'd gone to a boarding school that was like double the size triple the size of Groton as at that age, I would have been so lost. You don't have the same support network. Um, and I don't think I would have grown nearly as much as a person because I wouldn't have had that visibility. So shout out to the parents who are like thinking about boarding school, definitely smaller is the way to go, I think, in my opinion. Um, and then when you graduate, you're ready to leave. Um, and in the way where you're like, oh, I recognize all these amazing things and tools that Ron has given me and I'm ready for the next chapter in life. Um, some boarding schools you walk on, you're like, whoa, this feels like a college campus. And like, you have time to go to college, like go to high school. Um, and so I really like the small atmosphere. And I think that support network like really helped me my freshman year, especially um, leaving home for the first time. Um, I know the question was about um, caveats, the small, the small boarding school experience. But I just wanted to say that one of the benefits is that class size tend to be smaller than a lot of other schools. Um, I, the, I was fortunate enough to be in a two-person class last year with yours truly, Mr. Machiavella, um, which was, was a great experience. I got to know him very well, got a lot of personal um, help and, and tutoring, um, and it was my favorite class because of how immersive uh, we got to be, just us three together. Great. Yeah. Uh, more questions. Okay. Um, this is a quick one. Um, folks want to know where the alums go to school now. I'm at Stanford. I'm at Harvard. All right. Um, this one uh, kind of touches this next question, kind of touches on some other questions that have been coming through, um, which is how does an atheist fit in at Groton School? Um, so we've just been getting questions about um, our, our religious program at our school um, and just generally like how do students fit in at the school? So I'm, I'm Catholic, but I know a lot of my friends are, are atheists and they were worried about um, coming to Groton being atheist. But the thing is, Groton is more about spirituality than it is about any one individual religion. Um, for example, chapel in the morning, normally have like a quote or a reading to help you on your day but it's not really usually tailored toward any one religion um as well as this um the religious services on weekends you um it's your choice you don't have you're not forced to go to any one um religious service and you can kind of even float around at the beginning to kind of see what you like best what do you feel most comfortable with so it's it's definitely really inclusive in that aspect Well, um, we do have a, a study hall that's about to begin in a few minutes. Um, Carolyn, would you be willing to stay on with me and, and we can release the students and the headmaster? <laughs> I just yes. don't want to leave, I don't want to leave people unsatisfied if you have some questions, but I do want to be mindful of everyone else's time. 
Um, I don't think my students have much work to do, right? Will and Elizabeth, there's not much for my class. What's the answer, Will? Is there a lot to do there or what? Uh, not, not a ton to do, but uh, we do need to delay Mr. Machabella from grading our quiz corrections. As well. <laughs> very true. Well, everybody, uh, thank you very much, especially Derek and Montana for joining us from University Life and reflecting on Groton. It's such a pleasure to see all of you, but especially you two. I haven't seen you in a bit. So thanks very much. Everybody, please join our webinar on Thursday, uh, the 30th at 8 p.m., uh, navigating your way through the application process and the open house, which takes place this upcoming Saturday. Elizabeth, Will, Logan, Derek, Montana, Mr. Macabella, thank you very much for a great evening sharing your thoughts about Groton. Ms. Cheek and I will remain for a bit longer to answer some questions. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you.